guys, welcome to Talking Money with Nozi, personal finance made simple. Today, I'm going to be talking about investing in government bonds or retail savings bonds. Same thing. When people hear the word bond, they immediately think of home loans and they get confused when I mention investing in bonds because they're like, how do you invest in a home loan? Well, guys, you do know that there are words that mean different things depending on what you are talking about, right? Words like date, drop, left, right, train. Those words have got several meanings. Well, it's the same thing with the word bond. The word bond can refer to a home loan or it can refer to a type of investment. And today I'm going to be talking about bonds as a type of investment. So what is a government bond? A government bond is when you as the investor lend your money to the government. The government takes your money and uses it for its projects. And in return, you receive interest on your investment and you also get your money back at the end of the investment period. Bonds are also described as fixed income because your investment earns fixed payments over the period of the investment. How do you find government bonds? Well, to find government bonds, you go online to RSA retailbonds.gov.za and there are three different types of government bonds that you can choose from. Number one, there is the fixed rate RSA retail savings bond. Number two, there is the inflation linked RSA retail savings bond. And number three, there's the RSA retail savings top up bond. Let me explain how these three types of bonds work. Okay, guys, I'm going online to RSA retail savings bonds. Click on the link. This is what the website looks like. It's written there, RSA savings bonds. There's register. If you're new, if you want to start a new account, you can actually register here. And there's login if you've already got an account and you just want to log in to check what's going on with your investments. Okay, so here are those three types of bonds. There's the fixed rate bonds. There's the inflation linked rates. And there's the new one called the RSA top up bond. Okay, so I'll start with the fixed rate bonds. So there's the two year fixed rate bonds at 7.75%. There's the three year fixed rate bond at 8.5%. And then lastly, there's the five year fixed rate bond at 10%. How do they work? Guys, these work similarly to your bank fixed deposit accounts. You choose your investment terms, so the two year, three year or five year, and then you put in your lump sum. And you can't top up on that lump sum. So you put in your lump sum and then you choose either to reinvest the interest or to earn the interest every month or twice a year. And then at the end of the term, you will get back your capital, your lump sum, which you put in at the beginning. So let's look at the calculator, which actually shows you what to expect with these fixed rate bonds. So you can see that these are the options. The options are you can reinvest the interest, meaning you don't get paid out the interest. You will get it at the end of the term. There's the option to receive interest semi-annually, which is to receive it twice a year. And also there's the option to receive your interest monthly. Guys, these rates that you see here, the 7.75, the 8.5 and the 10%, those are not monthly interest payments, your guys, because if that was true, the government would run out of money very quickly. These are annual interest rates. For you to calculate how much you actually get per month, you divide by 12. Okay, guys, so don't get it twisted. These are not monthly, they are annual. So let's just pretend that you had a lump sum of 100,000. So I'll type it in that space there where it says investment amount. Okay, so if I choose to reinvest the interest, let's calculate that. All right, so for the two year fixed bond at the end, you'll receive 116,460 Rand and 15 cents. So the 100,000 is your initial investment, right? But on top of that, your money would have earned. 16,460 rand. Okay. For the three year fixed bond, if you reinvest the interest at the end of the three years, you'll receive 128,413 rand and 70 cents. So your initial capital is 100,000, right? Which you'll get back. But the interest that has, that has been earned on top of that would be 28,413 rand. The five year fixed bond at the end of the term, you will receive 162,000. 965 rand and 57 cents. So your initial capital was 100,000 rand, but the interest earned on top of that would be 62,965 rand and 57 cents. This is if you reinvest. 
what if you choose the option to receive interest semi-annually? Semi-annually means twice a year. So what will happen for the two-year bond is that twice a year, you'll be paid 3,875 rand. For the three-year bond, you'll be paid 4,250 rand. And for the five-year bond, you'll be paid 5,000 rand twice a year, okay? And then at the end of the term, you get back your initial investment. What about monthly? If you choose the monthly payment, this is what you'll get. For the two-year bond, your monthly payments will be 645 rand and 83 cents. For the three-year bond, your monthly payment become 708 rand. And for the five-year bond, your monthly interest payments will be 833 rand. Okay, another thing about these fixed bonds is that you can restart your investment. So at the end of the two-year bond, if you want to continue, you can just simply reset and start all over again. Same applies for the three-year and the five-year bond. Another thing is, so these interest rates don't remain the same. Treasury can decide during the year to increase these to a higher amount. So the rules are you can reset the interest after 12 months. So let's say you start investing today, which is whatever date it is in May, okay? So if next year in May, the interest rates are no longer 7.75 or 8.5 or 10%, they're higher, you've got the opportunity to restart your investment at that higher interest rate. Okay, now that we have dealt with the fixed rate bonds, let's move on to the inflation linked rate bonds. And by the way, guys, one thing that I forgot to mention is the minimum investment for your fixed rate is 1,000 rand. Same applies to your inflation linked rate bonds. You start investing from 1,000 rand going upwards. But now let's talk about the inflation linked rate bonds. What are they and how do they work? So we've got the inflation linked three year bond, the inflation linked five year bond, as well as the inflation linked 10 year bond. And how these work is that when you buy the bonds, whichever term it is, your capital, your investment is adjusted to inflation twice a year, every six months. That's why it's called inflation linked. So our inflation changes all the time. It's not stagnant. So each time inflation changes, your capital is also adjusted by that amount that the inflation has changed to. In addition to that, you're going to receive interest payments into your bank account twice a year. Unfortunately, you are not allowed to reinvest your interest, unlike with the fixed rates. And at the end of the term, whichever term you choose, you will receive your money adjusted to inflation at the end of the investment period. Lastly, guys, let us talk about the RSA top up bonds. This one is brand new. So it was introduced in April 2022. So it's new to many people. I'm sure some people watching this video have never seen this before. But National Treasury has introduced this RSA top up bond. What is it? Just as the name suggests, guys, remember with these two bonds, the fixed rate and the inflation linked rate, you cannot top up. What it means is that once you deposit your money into the five year or 10 year bond, whatever it is, you can't go back next month to put more money onto your previous investment. You'd have to start a brand new, fresh investment from scratch. But with the top up bond, the good news is that number one, the minimum investment is 500 rand. So unlike these two, where the minimum is 1,000 rand, with the RSA top up bond, the minimum is 500. And then National Treasury went on to say, you can top up on top of that 500 rand with a minimum of 100 rand or more. So you can start your investment with 500 rand and then going forward, you can put in 100 rand, 100 rand, etc. Another good thing about this RSA top up bond is that stock fells can participate. So I know a lot of people are in stock fells. So guys, if you're watching this video and you are a member of a stock fell, please ask your members to watch this video and they'll watch and see that there's an RSA top up bond that they can participate into. The interest on that is 8.75%. Again, this is an annual interest. And this time around, the interest is not going to be paid to you into your account. So all interest that is earned in this account will be reinvested and you will get back your money plus the interest earned at the end of the term. How long is the term for the RSA top-up bond? It is three years. And another cool feature about this RSA top-up bond is that you can switch. Once your balance is more than a thousand rand, you can switch to the five-year fixed rate bond. And again, the rules of the five-year fixed rate apply. Okay, so five-year fixed rate, you can't top up. So if you want to continue topping up, you can just leave it as a top-up bond and you can participate as an individual or as part of a stock fell. 
Okay, guys, so I have shown you those three types of bonds, the fixed rates, the inflation linked rates and the RSA top up bonds, right? One last thing that people forget to consider is the tax implications. So there are tax implications to consider when it comes to your bonds. So in order to figure out like what tax is applicable, I just go and type tax on interest income South Africa. Guys, Google is your friend, like literally. Here it says interest exemptions. So interest, this is interest from your bonds, even interest from your savings account, guys. So it's saying that there is an amount which is exempted from tax. And what is that? So for our tax year, the amount of interest which is exempt, meaning which is not taxed, is anything below 23,800 rand. So if you are earning interest, okay, and this is an annual amount, if you are younger than 65 years old, the amount of interest that you earn is not taxed as long as it is below 23,800. When it goes above 23,800, then you are liable for tax. If you are older than 65 years old, you become liable for tax once the interest income is more than 34,500 rand. Okay, but then how much tax will you actually pay? So let's say your interest income is more than 23,800. So how much will you pay? Well, for that, you need to go to the SARS income tax tables. And guys, all of us should know where we belong on the SARS income tax tables. It helps you with your tax planning. It helps you also with your retirement annuities. If you contribute to your RA, it helps you to calculate how much you get as a rebate because your rebate is based on your tax rate. Okay, so how much tax you will pay on your interest depends on where you fall on these SARS income tax tables. So there's 18% right up to 45% depending on your overall income. So SARS looks at your income as a whole. How much is she or he getting from a salary or from properties that you own Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So they look at your income as a whole, and your income as a whole will then determine where do you fall. So how do you start investing in retail bonds? Right. There are three steps that you need to follow. Step number one: you need to register and provide your personal details. Where do you register? You can register at any branch of the South African Post Office, or you can register online. On the website so www.rsaretailbonds.gov.za or you can register directly at the national treasury 240 madiba street in pretoria or you can register by calling 012-315-5888 after you've registered you will receive a reference number that you will use when you make payments into the retail savings bond bank account Step number two, after registration, you choose the bond that you want, whether you want the fixed bond, the inflation link bond, or the top up bond. Step number three, you pay to buy your bonds. You can pay at any branch of the South African post office, or you can pay using internet banking, or you can pay using a direct deposit at your bank. Okay, guys, that's it for today's video. If you have any questions or comments about government bonds, please type them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. Also, remember to give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, bye guys.